Hey, howdy, hello, and let me go ahead and give you some context to what's about to happen. So, within the video I made before I, uh, this video, I had went ahead and recorded everything uh, of part uh, 12, I believe. And what had happened was I was being a, a dumbass and I accidentally deleted the main uh, Elgato capture software uh, library folder which included the capture so um, the video that had um, the whole thing in it and that meant I had to redo all of it now I was faced with two uh, possible things I could have did I could have uh, pretended that none of it happened and maybe dropped a couple of hints that's what I what happened and just redid the whole thing and try to uh, pretend like it, you know I didn't delete it or I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do, or I could do what I'm going to do right now, which is I'm about to play an, a version, I'm gonna play the main uh, story points, which are actually very important um, before, and then I'm going to uh, do a segment where I give my um, kind of thoughts about the main story because this was actually very important very detailed and had a lot of um, very story heavy um, you know segments that uh, that was really important and really opened up who dust was as a character and if it was any video maybe like a part 11 if that part had got accidentally deleted I would have been fine but this was a very important scene that really needs to be seen in order to get what's about to happen next so I'm about to play that right now, and then we'll jump to my uh, segment where I just talk a little bit about what's happening. All right, peace. Look up ahead, a village. All the way up here? Do you think it's that moon blood camp Kane was talking about? No, it's something else. It's en enough talking. Let's get up there. Who are you? What are you doing in this place? You... You were dead! No, no, this is not possible. I don't know what demon you are, but you will not step any closer! Kill this... thing! any of this Dust, what are you talking about and who is cassius that's not it's not my name i remember it i know when i heard it <laughs> <laughs> Looks like this place has been destroyed for quite some time. 
A year, actually. Huh? How do you know that? This was Ginger's village. I was here one year ago. According to Fuse, according to Ginger, I helped murder everyone in this village. Oh, Dust. But I don't remember any of it. I remember this place, but it feels like it's been more than a year. Aro, what does it mean? It only means that things are not as they seem. Explore the village further, Dust. Let us see what secrets it hides. <laughs> This house. Do you remember something, Dust? This is impossible. Dust? How? Do you see now? But how, Ara? I don't understand. The answers lie above, Dust. Ginger, she was sleeping right here, on the night I came to say goodbye, but I hesitated, I didn't want to wake her, didn't want her to worry about me, she couldn't know what I was about to do. Dust, what are you saying? She couldn't know that I was about to go avenge our parents. You mean, you're, but how, what's going on here? I... I remember now, but how? How can I have helped destroy this village, but be a victim of that same act? That's impossible. Only impossible for a creature with a single soul. Ginger. Those eyes. I know those eyes. So, Mithrarin, you finally see the truth. I am Elder Grey Eyes, leader of the Moonblood people. Well, what's left of them, that is. What did you mean just then, that I can finally see the truth? What do you know about me? His eyes, Elder. They're Jin's eyes. They do look remarkably similar to your brother's, yes. That is because his soul lives on within dust. What? However, to suit our needs, we required two souls. A soul of innocence is a noble thing, but without skill, without power, dust would have been struck down just as easily as your brother was on that faded day. No. So we combined your brother's soul with that of his murderer, the royal assassin known as Cassius. They perished at the same time, forever entwined. Never before had I heard of such an event. You, you murderer! My parents did nothing wrong! You have been deceived, little one. Your parents turned against their king, an act of pure treason. What resistance there was, was led by your family alone. You destroyed my village, murdered my friends and family. You will not survive this day. I take no joy in slaughtering one as young as you, child. But you have forced my hand. Ah! Ah! A grave injustice was done that day. Cassius murdered a defenseless djinn, but his pride and arrogance proved to be his undoing. But how? How can this... this thing be my brother? It's not possible. I couldn't even remember you when we met. You are djinn, yes. But you are also Cassius. Two souls, forever at odds. One of innocence, one of power. Together you form the one we call... Mithrarin, he who is born of the dust. I never knew what happened. Jin just disappeared one night. I had always hoped he would turn up alive someday. That he would come back. But could you really be him? Ginger, I don't know. I... I don't know. 
Now, Dust, I imagine you have many questions. Please, do not hesitate to ask them. Who, or I guess, what am I? You are what my people call Sen Mithrarin, he who is born of the dust, created from the essence of the life thread itself. You see, my people have been on the verge of extinction for a great many years. General Gaius planned to eradicate us once and for all. And while our warriors are proud and strong, what chance would we have against such a powerful foe? To defeat General Gaius and save our people, we would need a warrior capable of standing against an entire army. This warrior would also need to be pure of heart, incorruptible. So that's why you picked Cassius and Jin. Just like you said, opposites. Exactly. Cassius was one of the greatest warriors this world has ever seen. And Jin's purity of heart would help guide our warrior to save our kind. From their fallen souls, you were born. Born to save us. To save this world. Why did I only remember now? I didn't even recognize Ginger when I met her. You may possess the souls of two separate beings, but your body and mind are your own. You were created to save this world, so we felt giving you memories of either soul would simply distract you from the task at hand. I had no idea who I was, what my purpose was. You say that, but in all cases you did exactly what we intended you to do. You saved complete strangers outside of Aurora Village. You stopped our wayward brother Fuse from destroying all that we sought to save. You saved Mudpot and brought the waters of life back into this land. You purged a demonic rage from this land and even helped two old souls find peace once more. You may not have known your purpose, but that did not stop you from fulfilling it. And now I'm here. Yes. Now you are here, and we can finish this fight once and for all. How does the Blade of Ara fit into all this? What is it, exactly? It is one of the five blades of Elysium, ancient weapons forged when our kind were many, and the way of the flameless light was commonplace. Wait, wait, wait. What the heck is the way of the flameless light? A path we Moonbloods continue to follow. It is a way of living, a way of thought, that allows us to make use of a power both old and great. Magic without magic. I am so confused. Surely, as Nimbat Sword Guardian, you studied the ancient doctrines. You must know, in the event that the sword is summoned by its rightful owner, you are obligated to follow. I skipped over that chapter? You haven't answered my question. The Blades of Elysium were created to guide their sword bearers, Dust. I was summoned to your side to ensure a balance was maintained between the souls within you. Ah, my old friend. It is good to hear your voice once more. It has been a long time, Master. Wait just a second. How can you possibly know each other? My clan's been keeping the sword hidden for over 200 years. Master Grey Eyes has lived for a very long time, Fidget. Longer than any of you. So you were sent to keep an eye on me? To help you reach your true potential. Nothing more. I have no more questions. What now? You must join us in the Moonblood Camp to the north in the Everton Basin. Isn't anywhere near the Everdon volcanoes, is it? They are one and the same, yes. Well, that's fantastic. Volcanoes? Indeed. What a better place to hide than in the most volatile land in all the kingdom. Oh, I know. How about a peaceful meadow? Or a quiet forest? Or someplace that doesn't explode every ten minutes? Dust, your friend seems awfully tense. Fine, come on, let's go to the blowy up mountain. Really, I'm serious. 
Fidget, you need to have more faith in me. I'll have faith in you when you have faith in yourself. How about it, huh? Who are you, really? I am... I... Uh... You see? You still haven't figured it out yet! Lizard guy tells you right to your face, and you still don't know! Fidget, please calm down. You mustn't test your friend like this. I just... <sighs> if I'm gonna follow you to the literal end of this world, I need to know who I'm following. And why. I understand, Fidget. You're right. I, I can't ask you to follow me. But I can. Fidget, you have stood by Dust's side for this entire journey. You have watched him save this world. How can you continue to doubt? I just don't get it. It doesn't matter who he thinks he is. He's Dust. That's who he is. That's who I know. Fidget, please. I can't do this without you. Can you, uh... Can you repeat that? I said I can't do this without you. I'm sorry. I just... Nobody's ever said that to me before. And it won't be the last time, I assure you. Are you ready, Mithrarin? I am. Then we will meet you in the Everdawn Basin. Goodbye, Dust. We'll see you there.